Financial services technology is currently in the midst of a profound transformation. Malaysia is not exempted to feel the heat due to the rapid technology development. Furthermore, the COVID-19 crisis is pushing the adoption rate and putting immense pressure on technology capabilities. It's also recorded that the shifts of consumer behavior from brick and mortar to online shopping as the next normal. So, the digital financial services indeed provide convenient, accessible, and efficient financial solutions to society. However, how many Malaysians are still unfamiliar with various digital financial tools and services? Digital financial services adoption, are we leveraging enough? I am Muhammad Mafrukin Mukhtar, and this is The Insights. Let's go. AKPK Financial Education and Wellbeing Research Center, FEWRC, conducted a survey to more than 3,000 consumers on their online spending behavior during the pandemic and uncovered several key findings. We found that majority of respondents, 85%, reported that they will practice a new normal of spending which they will embrace digital browsing and online shopping. Uh, the adoption is quite high back then, with slightly more than half, which is 57%, browse online shopping application at least one to two times every day. And majority, 60%, shop online at least a few times in a month, which groceries, food and gadgets with top products browsed online. Um, as consumers tend to embrace digital browsing and online shopping, the amount spent online, of course, will increase. Those who used to spend via online platform at least 200 ringgit Malaysia per month before the pandemic had increased their spending from 16 to 30 percent during the pandemic. Another question to raise how digital spending could expose consumers to be more vulnerable? In line with the growing trend of online shopping, our survey also found that 3 out of 10 respondents were classified as compulsive online spenders. Joining us today, our guests uh, who are very experienced in the field of digital financial services, we would like to welcome uh, Puan Azlina Idris, uh, Senior Director, Payment Network Malaysia or Paynet. Thank you, Puan Azlina, for joining us. Uh, welcome to the Insights. Um, let's start the discussion with, you know, uh, put a landscape of uh, the trend um, on the e-commerce in Malaysia. So, would you like to share some insights? Okay, so um, e-commerce uh, is actually one of the products, e-commerce payments is actually one of the products that we provide as a national retail payments infrastructure provider, right? Uh, and um, the trend that we see uh, can be categorized as uh, three. One is points in time. The other one is uh, demography. The third one is actually uh, the level of tax heaviness. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at the points in time, as you correctly pointed out uh, with in the AKPK survey, um, the trend during pandemic has a propensity to have a steeper adoption curve mm -hmm. when it comes to e-payments or uh, e-commerce transactions. Pre-pandemic, it was growing, but it's not as steep as during the pandemic period. Now, post-pandemic, which is the current period that we're in, uh, since the endemic period started, we are now seeing the tapering off. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing more people coming into shops, buying uh, you know, in shops, in store, uh, versus uh, buying online. Mm -hmm. now, so that's, that's the, the, the points in time uh, perspective. From the uh, demography perspective, we are seeing there's actually a higher tendency for those living in urban uh, to do e-commerce mm -hmm. as opposed to those living in non-urban. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of age groups, there's actually three specific uh, and distinct uh, age groups that we see. The 
uh, baby boomers, the Gen X, the Gen Ys and Zs. Now, Gen Y and Zs are actually what you call digital natives. Mm -hmm. The propensity to use digital payments is more of like, I like to do it, it, digital payments. That's the mindset. I see. So when it comes to the middle group, which is Gen uh, X, it's only when I have to, right? The, the final group, which is actually more of the laggard, is, is the older groups, older generation, will choose to do digital payments only if they are forced to. So if, that's, there is, if there is no option, if there's no other options, I have to do it. Then I have to do it. Right. Yeah. So so that's that's uh, one thing that we see from from a gen generational perspective, mm -hmm. and that uh, also what we see in terms of geographical spread perspective. And there's also the tendency of uh, the male female. We do see some some differences. Mm -hmm. The younger male, 25. Uh, I mean, uh, younger female, 25 to 35 year olds have a tendency to use more digital payments compared mm -hmm. to the male older generation living in non-urban areas, okay. right? So, so those are the generational differences. Now, the uh, final thing is actually about level of tax heaviness. And this is not really a factor of age. Depending on how digitally savvy you are, the propensity to use e-payments is actually higher, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but that is not to say that anyone who's tax savvy uh, automatically uses e-payments. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, there's another study, a global study that's being done uh, across all the countries in the world. Mm -hmm. We are among the highest users I of see. cash on delivery. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, so, so meaning you you shop online, mm -hmm. but you pay cash. I see. So, so that's that's the kind of like global. I mean, uh, overview or perspective of, mm -hmm. of e-commerce landscape mm -hmm. uh, for this country. Yeah. I see. So, so when 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 you talk about the comparison between countries. Um, what, what happened to the neighboring countries? I mean, are we... Um, where are we? Uh, where are we? In, uh, so, in, in so okay. Of, yeah. um, very good question. Interesting one. Uh, ASEAN has above average uh, population of the young. Okay. Right? So, so, if you look at the global average of... Uh, the, the global age uh, average, we are on the younger side. As opposed to the older side, although we are yeah. an aging population, although we are going to the aging yeah, population, yeah. we are still young. We are still considered young above all the other mm -hmm. uh, countries, and mm -hmm. ASEAN is actually uh, the highest concentration of younger population. I see. Right, uh, that's the first uh, point. The second point is that the level of digital penetration, mm -hmm. on average, every Malaysian owns one uh, more than one mobile phone. So the, the level of literacy is actually pretty high. And the third thing is that the level of connectivity. So um, as a population, Malaysia is among the leading population compared to the world average in terms of online presence. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, there's actually another study with, that we came across. Our Facebook usage as well as our Twitter usage is, are among the top in the, in the world. In the world, not yeah. even in ASEAN. Not even in ASEAN. It's actually among the top in the world because we, right. we check in on things a lot. We we talk about things a lot. Mm -hmm. We use the social media and the online media quite mm -hmm. a lot. In okay. fact, there's already a shift uh, in terms of uh, leveraging on mainstream media versus online, online. media. So the new media. Uh, the new media. The new medium. Yeah. So that's the the kind of perspective and dynamics that you're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact. If you look at us uh, from the global perspective, mm -hmm. are we a global leader mm -hmm. in digital adoption? I would say yes. Yeah. All right. So you also touched about um, when when someone have gadgets, um, it, it, can it be used to indicate whether a Malaysian uh, tech, you know, tech, tech savvy uh, in terms of what what is the digital financial uh, literacy landscape in Malaysia? Right now. So, okay, the, the level of digital financial literacy as mm -hmm. opposed to digital literacy okay. is, this, is still below average. It's still below average. Yeah. But when it comes to digital literacy, we are up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's, that's a bit of a, of a disconnect there. We are, we are using it, but we are not really using the financial side. Sense. Yeah. So, okay. so um, the level of uh, savviness in terms of uh, detecting scam, fraud, mm -hmm. uh, requires room for improvement, mm -hmm. the way I see it, because mm -hmm. um, there's still people falling prey to uh, scams, 
I see. More than fraud. Because when it comes to fraud, one thing about um, you know Malaysia is that we have very good, robust system to mm-hmm. detect, stop, or you know at least um, you know pursue uh, all mm-hmm. these fraudsters. Mm-hmm. What we fall prey to more is actually uh, scams. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, just to differentiate between fraud and scam, mm-hmm. fraud is something that is engineered mm-hmm. in in mm-hmm. in uh, an online sense, but scams is actually human related. Mm-hmm. So, so you get you get dupe, you get uh, you know uh, conned, you know mm-hmm. uh, Macau scam for instance, you mm-hmm. know a love scam, you know these are things that. Uh, socially engineered uh, mm-hmm. methods to actually infiltrate your mm-hmm. financial information mm-hmm. or uh, divulge customer information unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. I, I want to delve mm-hmm. further in sure. terms of um, uh, you know issues of fraud and scam. Sure. Um, could you elaborate um, where are we in terms of you know uh, are we getting scam more as compared to other neighboring countries? Citizen? So uh, we we actually have a, a national task force, eh? and uh, it is actually a, a joint task force uh, which should we should be proud of. Paynet is part of it. In fact, uh, we run the what you call um, uh, fraud portal, right, for the country. Uh, and if there's any scam or fraud, you actually report to that particular portal. It's called nine nine seven, right? Yeah. So, so um, because of this multi-agency, multi-authority approach, uh, we're able to kind of like measure, detect, um, and and are now trying to prevent, uh, you know, the proliferation of uh, scam, mm-hmm. mule accounts, um, you know, uh, frauds and mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. Now, um, in terms of whether our the threat actors are actually more active in Malaysia or otherwise, that's mm-hmm. still a subjective uh, mm-hmm. thing. Uh, yeah, I, I just about to ask why. Yeah, you know, yeah. is there any factors that that you know uh, that has been noticed by uh, this uh, task force? Mm-hmm. The reason why people are being scammed. So, so one thing uh, that is uh, for sure is mm-hmm. that they are seeing a noticeable trend uh, among those who are not. Number one, digitally re- literate. Mm-hmm. Number two, financially literate, okay. right? And um, the the fraudsters, actually, more of the scam side of things. Uh, the the scammers have a tendency to prey on the vulnerable group. Who are they? Those who are lonely. Mm-hmm. Those who are living alone. Mm-hmm. Elderly, and do not have a good social circle. So they do not have this tendency to actually yeah. check with one another as to, you know, uh, whether or not this is indeed fake or you know whether they're being uh, scam, and so on and so forth. So they don't have a social system to actually, uh, you know, for them to do a second check on. Mm-hmm. And the other aspect of that is that you know you if you don't have that social uh, you know uh, network to actually support you on that, uh, there's also a tendency to rely on fake news, right? Mm-hmm. So on that score, you you fall more vulnerable to this kind of uh, you know uh, tactical behaviors, which will uh, result in you know all these uh, cases where scam and and uh, duping is actually happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you mentioned about the elderly being scam. I think yeah. um, uh, we need to you know this is I mean to me is quite rampant in the mm. sense that mm. you know uh, quite a number of elderly. I mean, elders are being True. scammed. Um, I think the the awareness of those uh, elderly need to be. I mean, Increase, as you yep. said, um, yep. there is a quite a lot of room for improvement. Mm. Um, uh, this is very interesting. But I think um, let's take a break uh, for a while, and uh, please stay tuned. And we'll we will be right back. Let's go. Welcome back to the insights brought to you by AKPK Financial Education and Wellbeing Research Center FEWRC. We were talking with Puan Azlina uh, from Pnet about digital adoption. Are we leveraging enough? Questions to you, Puan. I mean, uh, in the first round, we mentioned about there is also a room for improvement in terms of adoption in 
in in e-commerce um, i mean digital financial services uh, adoption uh, usage and whatnot um, why there are some people who are still having a resistance to use digital okay so i will answer that question in two sides right because payment is two-sided mm -hmm. uh there's there's the customer who's paying uh, making the payments and there's also the merchants who's accepting the payments now let's let's cover the the customer, the customer aspect yes, yeah yes. So, so um, in our survey, we actually asked a question: Why? What is stopping uh, you from using an e-wallet or a digital payment uh, wallet? You know, uh, as opposed to using cash. Um, the top reason that came out is that they say that it's habit. I prefer to use cash because it's easier. Now, the second reason was that they say they don't know how to use it, meaning the user friendliness is still needs to be worked on and that's actually uh, something that that we we you know in pain and actually need to work on it uh the other one is actually they fear overspending and then uh, there's also the security acceptance and the final reason uh in in terms of the top five is actually merchant acceptance mm -hmm. not many shops accept qr payments and that is also something that we're working on now the top five reason for not using cards fear of overspending again and then they're so used to paying cash um mm -hmm. They don't want to incur debts, fraud concerns, as well as security concerns. Now, if we were to dissect that particular answer, security and fraud isn't the top reason, but it's in the top five. Right? I see. But what is coming out and jumping out very clearly to us is that customers are still finding it difficult or challenging, especially the ones who don't want to use uh, digital payments or card payments, to use these instruments. Mm -hmm. Meaning, the customer journey and the customer experience is still quite bad, mm -hmm. right? And needs improvement in, in that particular aspect. Now, so that's from the, the perspective of the customer. Now we go to the other side, the merchant side. Yeah. Be what? Be before yeah. we go to the merchant, so I'm sorry sure. to stop it. Uh, you mentioned about people not prefer to use because of customer experience. Experience, yes. What about the trust level? Is there any issue about the trust level then? Because if you look at the top five reasons for not uh, using e-payments, mm -hmm. trust didn't come out, so mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't among the reasons. But security concerns does come out, mm -hmm. and uh, fraud concerns does come out, right? Mm -hmm. as, as in one of the top five reasons. So so you can actually extrapolate that aspect of trust is yeah. there. But yeah. then, do I trust the app? Mm -hmm. I think that there, there is a, a propensity mm -hmm. to trust it, mm -hmm. right? Especially when when it comes to the well-known names. And and one of among the things that that is actually quite key is that um, you know if you use your ATM card, mm -hmm. if you use your uh, QR payments, mm -hmm. there's always a very distinctive uh, sign or distinctive signage mm -hmm. to differentiate whether it's legitimate or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I suppose that's the the key reason why trust doesn't come out as a top I concern. See. Yeah, I have another one element. You know, if, as a consumer. If I don't see a benefit to me, I will not use. Exactly. Um, is it one of the factors that come up from the survey as well? Yes, customer experience. So, so um, I mean, different generations mm -hmm. would want different what's in it for me, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what we understood from the Gen Ys and Zs mm -hmm. is that if I have instant gratification, the higher I am, to want to use a particular payment uh, mode, yeah. right? Yeah. And if that instant gratification comes in the form of gamification, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. you have a mission to do or things like that, the more sticky it is, meaning that you, sure. I, I'm more inclined to use this particular mode of payment as opposed yes. to the other mode of payment. Yeah. Now, so that's the Y and Zs, right? When it comes to the Gen X, it's actually a case of the economics of it. How much does it cost, right? Uh, is there cashback? Is there a loyalty program mm -hmm. that I can redeem against something else? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, not so much on the instant gratification bit. Mm -hmm. And the final group is actually the uh, baby boomers. Now, mm -hmm. baby boomers doesn't really much uh, give much difference of all these two things. Mm -hmm. They just want easy to use and no cost to them. That's all. Very, very interesting. So yeah. now let's let's proceed to the yes. uh, the merchants uh, side. Yeah. So okay, on the merchant side, we see the top five reason mm -hmm. as number one. The fees and charges, oh, right? That's yeah. although um, you know, Paynet doesn't charge anything, mm -hmm. uh, but 
there is also the the fees and charges that m the merchants uh, you know get charged from mm -hmm. the banks and the mm -hmm. financial institutions. So so we do we are doing our best to actually address so that we make it equitable for all parties, right? Mm. So that's that's the first thing that came out. Sec the second one is also uh, the familiarity of using such an, an online payment system compared to doing a ledger keeping cash balance at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. so they, there is a hesita hesitancy to do that. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is that the ability to actually view your balances uh, immediately, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which, which to my mind, I think by this year, in fact, this year it has been addressed where mm -hmm. you can actually instantly look at your balances, uh, particularly with regard to QR and card payments. The fourth one is again security and fraud concerns because they feel that sometimes, you know, they get scammed. There's yeah. already this this uh, activity, uh, uh, you know, a syndicate that has a tendency to use QR payments and and mock it up as if it's actually a real payment, whereas it's not. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the the moment you have that kind of uh, one experience, a bad experience, that will kind of like diminish or erase all the trust that you have in online pay payment system. Mm -hmm. And the last one is actually infrastructure. So the biggest challenge around uh, adoption by merchants is that the more distant you are from uh, basic payment infrastructure or basic ideal payment structure in uh, and I, I mean by that uh, internet connectivity mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, vicinity with banks yep. as well as uh, the ability to have electricity constant supply and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, the ability to have at least uh, some kind of basic uh, computing system to do the POS mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the less likely you are to be mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it is actually a factor of distance. The less likely you are to adopt yeah, digital yeah, payments. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned about the POR, the points of sales uh, system, right? I, I think if, if you talk about SMEs, you know, this POR is something that, you know, why should I use that, you know? Yep. Um, and, and, and based on obse your observation on the mission, especially on the, on the small and medium enterprises, uh, there, is, there is a hesitancy to use. Yep. the services yes uh, maybe because they don't see the benefit yep you know um, but oh, I mean from from your observation uh, in addition to the they cannot see the benefit what about the literacy level you know um, in terms of using those apps or um, digital services mm -hmm. that at the end of the day could provide benefit to them but but they don't want to use it because they don't know or they... What, what do you think? So, so I will answer that in terms of... When, if you ask me, where are we mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the level of digital financial literacy among the SMEs, MSMEs, mm -hmm. even nano SMEs? Mm -hmm. I would say it's on the higher side. On the higher side? On the higher side. Why, why is that? The businesses that survives today mm -hmm must have gone online at some point in time. Yes. Yeah. So otherwise, they will... They, they would have been erased or stop, wiped out stop, during the pandemic. Close the right? shop. Yeah. And that's no, there's no other way to transact except to do online okay. or sell online mm -hmm. uh, at one point in time. Yes. Right? So, so, they're there in terms of the adoption. But mm -hmm. the thing is, whether they want to make it a habit, mm -hmm. whether it's habit forming or otherwise. Mm -hmm. Now, Right now, the issue that, that remains is that there's also the supply chain that's still cash intensive. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if you have a supply chain that actually is cash intensive, the fact that you went online creates a friction. It means that you would need to have some kind of cash in hand in order to pay for your supplies so that you can actually stock up your goods to sell to your customer. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to then address the issue of digitalizing the supplier chain in mm -hmm. order to get them to do online. Okay. Now, you you mentioned quite a very uh, quite quite a strong point in terms of um, there's nothing in it for me, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's also this, the second thing that that uh, you know we should be be mindful of when banks evaluate uh, the credit worthiness of an SME the payment behavior is not considered as part of the I see. you know approval process mm -hmm. the, tradi the traditional credit scoring method methodology mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if this payment behavior is actually a requirement to show how liquid you are or how credit worthy you are in terms of your uh, inflow and outflow of cash then there is actually a higher likelihood for you to prove that your payment track record 
is there in order for you to get credit. Then there's actually a reason why you should I adopt see. digital payments. I see. There's yeah. a different approach of assessing the. That's right. Payments. So, so for me, I I, I see this as uh, a high time for uh, bankers for the uh, financial fraternity to start relooking mm -hmm. at the credit scoring methodology uh, to to see whether you know we can actually infuse digital payment behaviors as a proxy for financial so or credit. credit worthiness. All right. Then yeah. you see the reasoning why you want to use digital payments more than others. I see. Yeah. But if you, I mean, I, I, I can do online payment. Um, I, um, you know, uh, maybe in terms of gender, male is quite uh, uh, decent in, ter in terms oh, yes. of, you know, yes. uh, looking at the online as compared to female. Mm. I, I think mm. uh, I, I can agree with that. Uh, However, I would like to raise some issue where, you know, in our research, we found that uh, three out of ten uh, consumers that we survey, they are forced under category impulsive buying spender on online spender. Uh, what is your view on, you know, uh, the seamless experience to the consumer uh, could also provide some room of exposure to the vulnerability? So, so what is your view on that? So, so. Uh, here's the thing about technology. It's actually agnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what, 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 what do I mean by agnostic? Uh, there's no such thing as evil technology True. or good technology, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it all boils down to the purpose for which you use it, right? Yep. And it could be the same behavior, but then uh, one is bad, the other one is good. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's always this issue of moderation. Yep. And there's always this issue of excessiveness, right? True. Uh, even in Islamic finance, for instance, then there needs to be a, a principle of proportionality in, in, uh, and, and moderation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, to make sure that, that things are kosher, right? Yes. And, and yeah. if you are uh, excessive in doing certain things, it yeah. can also lead to becoming haram, right? True. So, so uh, the same goes for, for technology, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you are financially indisciplined, mm -hmm. there is where your you know, fault line lies, yep. right? So you, if you are financially responsible and you know what your spending behaviours are mm -hmm. and you know what your wants are as opposed to what your needs are mm -hmm. and you know what your disposable income is plus your, uh, you know, savings behaviour and your investment behaviour, then you will know what to do in terms of your, uh, what you call um, spending hygiene, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you raised a very good point where, you know, we, I think we somehow establish and confirm the importance of the financial literacy. Yes. Uh, the basic financial literacy, yep. how you manage your money. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, digital is just enabler, mm -hmm. but if you can manage it well, mm. Uh, you will tend to get the benefit out of it. Yep. You know, so yeah, this is very interesting. But before we go to um, discussing about uh, what are the key takeaways that we can sure. do uh, and also advocate consumers out there to be more um, adopt into the digital, but at the same time, they have to adopt and educate it at the same yep. time. Yep. So uh, let's take a, a short break and stay tuned. We will be right back. Welcome back to the Insights brought to you by AKPK Financial Education and Wellbeing Research Centre, FEWRC. We are still talking about uh, digital adoption uh, by Malaysia and we have discussed about the issues and whatnot. And before we break just now, uh, we somehow confirmed that the importance of the financial literacy yes. at the very beginning yep. and um, digital financial literacy also need to be hand in hand, yep. how to use digital and whatnot. Um, how best can we educate? Uh, society. So, so one thing that that we may want to start doing is actually for people to do your own self assessment in mm -hmm. terms of how financially literate you are, right? Um, there are tools out there. Uh, there are tools in the market. There are tools online, uh, but they're not. I think there's there's a dearth of sufficient tools that's contextualized to the Malaysian mm -hmm. uh, people, right? 
So, so the moment you know that kind of uh, the level of literacy you are, uh, and and you know you can you can actually start from low, moderate, high. The better it is for you to be able to discern and to understand which products are suitable for you, right? And for that matter, when when it comes to the offering of the financial services product, we should be able to do that as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think the capital markets has done an excellent job doing that. Uh, Bank, Bank Negara uh, is also doing an excellent job uh, in selling and making sure that banks sell basic financial services and of uh, and from there offer a clear, plain language, uh, you know, explanation of what each product entails. So, so that financial literacy aspect needs to be there mm -hmm. as 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 a as a first cut. Now, on the uh, the the part of uh, the user, we need to be self aware, take the test, and mm -hmm start shopping or mm -hmm. looking and being responsible for your own financial well well-being mm -hmm. now the moment you take charge of that then you will know that you know at different points in life you have to acquire sufficient digital financial literacy because your needs and wants will differ mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, things like you know uh, wealth accumulation wealth preservation wealth transfer these three aspects will require a different level of literacy True. and awareness True. as well as your background and your family uh, you know, uh, circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. And as you move up uh, in your maturity level, that's where you need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I may add, it's not only that. I think in terms of general, generations, yep. different also yep. uh, need to be tackled. For that's example, right. as you mentioned about the Gen Y and Gen yes. Z. Uh, you know, there is a characteristic of this Gen Y, you know, uh, uh, like FOMO, fear of yes. missing out. Yes. Youngsters, they, they don't want to missing out with other peers. Yes. Uh, they also have, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, I want it now when I want it. Mm. You know, that's kind of mm. uh, characteristic. So how, how do we uh, address these youngsters having these characteristics? Uh, do you have any... Um, a thought on how to advocate to these youngsters because they are of course uh, the biggest adopters yep. um, and they are vulnerable because they are young yep. um, so how best can we approach that so so one thing that we noted uh, which is interestingly works quite well mm. is um, the usage of informal means right uh, because what we notice is that when it comes to the gen y's and the gen z's the propensity to listen is actually more from number one word of mouth, mm -hmm. and number two, uh, you know what what the who they're following. So so um, because of that, who they're following online or you know who they they kind of like um, look up to, right? Mm -hmm. So because of that, we we actually uh, started I think about uh, three years back, just before the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, to do what you call KOLs key opinion leaders, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for the key opinion leaders to kind of like create short stories mm -hmm. around um, digital financial literacy, around, you know, uh, stop, think before, yeah. you know, you click anything. In fact, we have gone even one step further. Ben Negara has even issued a directive. No more uh, sending of clicking uh, the link. links, right? To be to be uh, certain that people just don't do it, right? Yeah. And and the moment you see if a bank says that oh you've got to reset your password, please press this, that's definitely a, a scam. It's a no, no. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. So, so um, the bigger picture around that is that we have to go through informal means, and mm -hmm. we have to kind of like uh, tap and leverage on this uh, network of uh, you know uh, online, not mainstream media. It it has to be curated in such a way that. Uh, it has to be short. Mm -hmm. These days, uh, we used to do less than three-minute videos, but now no, it's actually less than seconds. yes, less than twenty seconds. Yeah. Uh, the real, uh, if it's a one minute, they say it's an epic, right? So, so uh, you have to be, you know, dense, and while you take the LRT, you can actually look at it, and it's just a twenty percent, you know, swishing kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, so that. Uh, approach is actually quite key. The other one is also we we did some mystery shopping as well. Mm -hmm. There's there's actually a tendency to to kind of like send some feelers out there. Some people will 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 uh, actually get it. Some of the banks actually do it, not all. 
uh, is actually to send bogus links and they say, oh, you just been scammed. Please be careful. Do not oh. do this again. Yeah. So it's just kind of like you know, making sure that they are educated properly. Yeah, yeah. To make sure that you know they don't fall prey to these yeah, kind of things. Yeah. There's a, there, there's yeah. a, like a nudging. That's right. That's uh, right. Kind of uh, yeah. uh, you know yeah. uh, education. Yeah. It, it's a bruise to the ego, but yeah. then uh, you know at least you now know that don't do such a thing anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's good. All right. Very interesting. But I think uh, time flies. We had a very good time. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, as uh, as we transverse the landscape and examine the impacts of e-commerce and also a digital financial literacy in Malaysia, a significant realization arises. Um, not all consumers are making the most of available resources. Uh, the factors influence Malaysia digital financial behavior makes up ponder. It's a ponder on the balance between seamless buying experience and the risk of impulsive spending and overspending habits. And we also confirm that there is a very important part of the financial literacy, uh, basic financial management. And, you know, these insights lead us to critically, uh, to the critical points where emphasizing the need for intensified awareness efforts to promote the benefits of digital finance services is key. Additionally, the low adoption of financial planning and budgeting demands special attention. Uh, moving forward, I think um, our focus must shift to proactive measures that boost the use of the digital financial management by doing some impactful efforts, like for example, you mentioned about using the key opinion leaders and whatnot, right? So, by enhancing educational campaigns, refining user-friendly interface, and emphasizing the long-term benefits of prudent financial habits, we pave the way for a future where Malaysians fully harness the potential of digital financial services. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Puan Azlina from uh, Paynet, and and I I am honoured to be you uh, in in the insights. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I am Muhammad Mafrukin Mokhtar. Until we meet again, thank you. Bye bye. Let's go.